Greetings! I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build a steam locomotive out of wood. What a good and sensible idea. Okay, so it's not a real locomotive, it's a laser cut MDF model from Sarissa Precision, intended as wargaming terrain for 28mm scale games like Bolt Action. Because this is laser cut MDF it comes in sheets, and there isn't really much to the packaging, which is fine by me, it's less wasteful that way. There are four sheets of MDF, and it's pretty simple. It's well cut so most of the parts come out of the sheets with no problem, and they don't require much cleanup if any. The detail, well, it's an MDF terrain piece. If you're looking for a highly realistic locomotive here, I don't know what to tell you. I guess I could tell you that you are doing it wrong. There's also a small sheet of cardboard for the roof and the bits that go on the front of the smoke box. The instructions are on the back of the piece of paper we saw on the front of the package. These are pretty easy to understand and follow. The text is a little bit small though. It's readable, but people with worse eyesight than myself might struggle a little bit. Okay, let's glue some bits of plastic, uh, wood together. I start with the frame. This part is the side of the frame. There's very little cleanup required for this kit, and most of the edges are laser cut, obviously, but so they stay in the frame, there's some thin bits that aren't cut. You might need to use a knife to force those out of the frame, and then sand down any nubbins. That's really about all you should need to do before gluing. And speaking of glue, I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue, made from real gorillas. I don't think that's the case, Herbert. I'm using cotton buds to apply the glue for lack of better tools. I glue the frame together, and there's a couple of smaller middle sections that go in between the two frame halves. The parts do lock together pretty easily, though the fit can be a little bit tight, so you might find pressing the part against the work surface helps. It probably doesn't matter so much in the frame, but I try to avoid having the glue build up too much. Once the frame's together, it's time to work on the buffer beams, and also the buffers. There's a little square peg, I guess you might call it, that goes in place first, and that's pretty simple, though do make sure you're putting this in the correct hole. There are two similar holes right next to each other, and the outer one is the one you want here. Then over that, I slide a pair of discs with a square hole in the center. This is how longer rounded parts are made with this kind of kit. Once those two parts are on, the buffer itself can go on. It's pretty much the same as the two previous parts, just a little bigger. The face of the buffer does have a bit of a hole in it. If that matters to you at all, it would be pretty easy to fill. Obviously, there are two buffers for each end. Here, you can see me attaching the front buffer beam to the rear of the frame. This is incorrect. Don't worry about that though. I'm attaching the coupling hook here, and that is one of the correct things to be doing. It does go here. I've even got it the right way up. I did, fortunately, realise I'd made the mistake soon enough that I was able to pull the buffer beams off and then attach things around the right way. This bigger plate you see here, it's the back of the cab combined with a buffer beam, I guess. The buffers and coupling are the same as at the front. It's pretty simple as long as you put it all together properly. Next comes this large flat buoy. This forms the cab floor and top part of the frame. It's not particularly tricky to put this on, but it did need a fair bit of pressure to get it all the way into place. This is followed by these wheel cover and ladder parts, which slot down through the framey thing we just installed. This also took a fair bit of pressure to get all the way into place. I guess you could sand things a bit so they go together a bit easier, but I think the tight fit is probably good anyway. The wheel covers don't have tops on them, which does seem a bit weird, but I would imagine it's kind of tricky to make those out of flat bits. I don't think it's a big deal, so I don't worry about it. On top of that, I add this flat part, which is the bottom section of the side tanks, and the boiler too, I guess. Here's the front of the tanks. Before installing that, this little support bar, I guess you might call it, needs to be pressed in from behind. This will hold some other things later on, but installing this now is much easier than trying to do so when the entire model is together. I then glue that front panel into place. This should be at a 90 degree angle to the frame. The cab front comes next, and this is, unsurprisingly, another tight fit. It also wanted to sit at a bit of an angle, so I applied some forward pressure, and that seemed to be enough. The sides of the locomotive come next, which is about as simple as it looks. Obviously none of this is overly complicated, and clearly we have to put these parts around the right way, so the round bits, which I'm assuming are rivet detail and the lining on the water tank, should go on the outside. Thanks Captain Obvious! 
it makes sense to follow this with the cab rear wall. It makes the cab nice and cosy and prevents the coal from the bunker from flooding in. Speaking of bunker, we have the rear section for that here, and then below that, nothing. Like the wheel covers, I would imagine it's just a bit difficult to make a part of this using MDF. It probably wouldn't be too hard to fashion something out of cardboard to put here. Same with the wheel covers. I'm not going to do that though because I'm, well, because I'm lazy and I just don't think it's that important. The top of the engine comes next, and like the front, we need to add two of these little support things. These are for the chimney and safety valve housing. It's important to get these into place before sticking the top down for what I think are somewhat obvious reasons. Sticking that top down is what comes next, and the fit is pretty good. Next we have this bit, which goes between the two supports on top of the boiler. As with most of the other parts, the fit is fairly tight, so we're gonna need to use some force. I would suggest letting the glue here bond completely before trying this. I didn't and I could feel the part moving. Because I didn't want to sit there live on stream watching glue dry, I've used a pair of pliers to hold the part so that it wouldn't slide down into the boiler and become unrecoverable. Then, onto the support closest to the cab, I add some discs. These are all different sizes, going from bigger at the bottom to smaller at the top. This is to represent the sloped shape of the safety valve cover. At the top there's a slightly wider bit, which represents the sort of lip that they usually seem to have. Clearly the real thing wouldn't be stepped like this, and if you really wanted, you could sand it so that it was a smooth shape. But that really does seem like a bit too much work for this kind of thing. One thing I noticed is the support thing doesn't go all the way to the top here, but it does do its job. The smokestack is pretty much the same idea, except most of the rings are the same size. I chose to give this a bit of a sanding, just to make it look a bit smoother, but that's not at all necessary. I did it because it would make a slight improvement, and it wasn't too much work. The top two discs are different sizes, and again, the inner support part doesn't go all the way to the top. In fact, I left one of the smaller discs out because if I didn't, there wouldn't be anything to fit the wider top part on. I did have to eyeball the top ring part on both of these, but that's not exactly the most challenging thing in the world. It's pretty simple. Next, these little round doodads go on here. I'm assuming these are meant to be caps for the water tanks. They go into the little circle like so. The front of the smoke box goes on next. These two parts go onto the mount that we installed earlier. You could still put this together if you didn't install that, but it would be a bit more annoying. These two discs are slightly different. The one with the little rectangular bit on the side goes toward the front. Then on front of that, we add these cardboard bits. These are, as you can see, hinges and the little smoke box door opening doodads. Now for some more frame and wheel holding shenanigans. I would recommend being careful with this, it's very easy to break this. And having this part broken made the entire thing just that little bit more difficult and annoying. It didn't really seem to want to be glued back together either. I did get this assembly together though, and that's what matters. These bits I'm putting in here are axles. The model isn't meant to roll around, so it's fine for these to be square. They aren't the easiest things to get into place. The instructions seem to want you to add the wheels with the axle in place, but that seemed kind of difficult. It's a bit fiddly to get the inner wheel onto the axle without breaking the axle, but if you're careful, you should be fine. It is also kind of fiddly to get the outer part of the wheel into place. The hole for the axle bit is obviously a rectangle, where the axle is a square. It will be visible enough if you do it wrong though, so keep an eye on things I guess. I roll the wheels along the desk to make sure they're not too wibbly wobbly. I've got no idea if these are in gauge or not, I don't think it's all that important. I then put the wheels into the frame. It's a bit tricky to get them into place, but they'll happily fall out of place with very little provocation. I imagine this would be a lot easier if the fit wasn't so tight here, that was my main issue. It also probably didn't help that I'd broken part of the frame. I got it into place though, and really, that's what matters. I line the wheels up so they're all in the same position, and then I add the connecting rods. The instructions want these on the axle part, which is a little bit offset from centre, but I thought it was just a bit too close to centre. I just glued the connecting rods a bit further down the wheel. Obviously you don't have to do this if you don't want to, I just thought it would look a bit better. The final step is installing the cab roof. This is another piece of cardboard. 
I bent this a bit, being careful not to crease it, and then I rolled it with my glue bottle to give it a gentle curve, which will make it a bit easier to glue on. There's nothing to guide this, so you've got to eyeball its position, and I do kind of wish there was a bit more of an overhang at the front and rear, but it's fine the way it is. I make sure there aren't any blobs of unwanted glue around the place, and that's it. One little locomotive which looks remarkably similar to a Great Western pannier tank in, I assume, fairly roughly 28mm scale, in MDF, from Sarissa Precision, completed. I think it's pretty cool. While you can purchase these directly from Sarissa, you can, and I did, also buy this through Warlord Games. Sarissa does make a lot of wargaming related stuff, not just trains either, and most, if not all of it, can also be had from Warlord's store. I would suggest if you're interested in these things, that you compare prices on both sides. I bought this years ago, so I couldn't say what the case is now, though I do intend to buy more of these MDF trains. I think they're pretty cool, and I enjoyed this build quite a lot. I'm sure the result is not everybody's cup of tea, they're not hyper realistic, obviously, but they are fun and relatively cheap, which is ideal when it comes to wargaming terrain. I imagine if you want something a bit more realistic, the only real choice is model trains. I don't think there are actually any ready-made trains available in 56th scale, which I think is pretty much right between S and O scales, and that kind of thing is way too expensive to be using as wargaming terrain. I think this is going to look pretty neat when it's painted up, and I'm kind of tempted to do that fairly soon because, well, why not? It's something different, and different is what I'm after right now. Anyway, I feel like I'm starting to waffle, so if you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. If you'd like to watch me build stuff like this live, I stream most of my builds over on Twitch, and you can find the link in the description below. Be sure to subscribe here on YouTube, and ring the bell of course, to see more of my modelling shenanigans. And if you'd like to see my videos a bit early before there's any ads, consider becoming a patron. You can find links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. Take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.